Police in Montreal are investigating a racist video that is circulating among teenagers and their families. As you're going to see, it shows two girls, believed to be local high school students, dancing in blackface with music that has racial slurs against black people. Matt Demour shows us this morning how the families are reacting. Miriam Maid first saw the video after her high school aged son sent it to her. At first, she didn't want to keep watching, but her son told her to see it through to the end. As the video continued, my arms just started going numb. Like, I was like, I can't believe this was sent to him. I can't believe this is West Island girls. I can't believe the extent of the racism. Maid sent the video to her husband and posted it on Facebook. The video features two students dancing in blackface. A song plays over the video using racial slurs to describe black people, including repeated use of the N-word. CBC isn't using audio from the video because of its offensive nature, and we aren't identifying the students because they're minors and police are currently investigating. It isn't clear when the video was produced, but it started being shared recently amongst a group of West Island teenagers. Maid's husband says he was shocked to see such blatant racism in a video. Me growing up, I've seen it plenty of times. It's happened to me plenty of times, but I mean, all you can really do is say it, but nobody really has it recorded like how they did. Maid's post of the video has gone viral with about 50,000 views. She thinks it's important for people to see it and to confront the racist ideas within it. This can't just be a viral video. Oh, two racist girls viral video and then they're going to apologize. I feel like there should, something needs to be done and I'm not saying uh, put them in jail or whatever, but they need to be educated. Another video is circulating online, believed to be an apology from one of the students involved. That is a report from Matt Demour in Montreal. Now, CBC News has not confirmed what school the students in the video attend, but there is one school assisting police with their investigation. We'll bring you more on that as we get further clarification this morning. Another troubling recording is in the news this Tuesday, this one from Ontario. And in this instance, it's not a student, but a teacher coming under fire. She was recorded using a racial slur in the classroom. The incident happened more than a year ago, but some students feel she has still not faced an appropriate punishment. Our Chris Glover has the exclusive details this morning and a warning. His story does contain some graphic language. Fed up with what her teacher had been saying inside Brampton's Notre Dame Secondary School on May 13th, 2019, a grade 12 student recorded her English teacher, Ann Stewart. Yeah, all the edited articles. And there was one word in it. I told Angelo what word it was after, and he said, that's not even that word. But see, it is for me. Oh. But that's a hard word. <laughs> right? That's a hard word. Shortly after Stewart telling the class how uncomfortable she is to say come, you hear the veteran teacher say how comfortable she is to say the full N-word. I have become comfortable saying the word I said it. <laughs> You're kidding me. No, I said it. I got to go. I got to no. go. No, you have to listen. No, miss, I got to go. I got to go. But you're not listening to my explanation. No, miss, I got to go. I don't feel comfortable. I got to go. I think that the most jarring thing is the almost complete lack of compassion in the tone. Simrit Cabra's friend is the student who recorded the audio and is heard leaving the classroom. Cabra wasn't in the room but was disgusted hearing the racial slur spoken by a teacher in a classroom and helped her younger friend navigate the system all the way to the Ontario College of Teachers. I heard someone who is unapologetic about their use of terminology that is derogatory and hurtful and unapologetic towards the students that she's supposed to nurture and help grow and help learn, um, which I think is the worst part of it all. The college's investigation found the teacher was remorseful and had apologized, but her callous use of the term N-word shows disregard for the emotional safety and well-being of her students. For the misconduct, she would face admonishment. Which, in how I understand it, is they should face kind of like a stern talking to and be told that they shouldn't say it again, uh, which is, is not enough. Cabra as disgusted by the punishment as she was by the audio recording. I was not expecting to hear that. 
So you just, don't even know the context. Miss, I just don't feel comfortable right now. So I'm just gonna excuse myself. The question of context is, is trying to paint it in a different light when really we should hold our teachers to a higher standard. Stewart's lawyer said he can't comment as the case is still active. Stewart has taught for nearly 30 years. The teacher advisor on the student council has not had other complaints, the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board says, but Stewart does have another blemish on a record. A previous teacher's college investigation found during the 2007-2008 school year, her relationship with four students crossed professional boundaries for things like letting them drive her car and dining out together. Together. Stewart was found guilty of professional misconduct. Her punishment was a boundary violation course. And so the Ontario College of Teachers says the verbal reprimand here at headquarters will be the final step in this matter. The board says that they also fully investigated this situation, but due to privacy legislation, they cannot explain the outcome of that investigation, but they do confirm that she is still a teacher at that same high school. Chris Glover, CBC News, Toronto.